Hello, my name is Mr. Perkins. I am a Bible teacher at Enlightium Academy. And this is the third part of our series on the book of Judges. This video is going to be about the judge Samson. Now, even if you don't know about the book of Judges, you probably have heard the story of Samson and you're probably very familiar with what I'm about to talk about. Samson is one of the last judges in the book of Judges and he is at a point in time where Israel is their most corrupt. And the nation of Israel is basically looks so similar to the other nations around them, it's very difficult to tell any difference now, which is of course a tragedy from where we started in Joshua, where they were supposed to be this nation that was different from all the others around them. Of course, going along with the corruption of the nation as a whole is now also corruption of individuals. And so the judge that God raises up, Samson, seems just as corrupt as the rest. So there are quite a few points in the story of Samson that we could talk about, but the one thing I wanna talk about is Samson's character. If you read the story of Samson honestly, and you read it from the text of the Bible, and you don't get the Sunday school version, you'll discover that Samson isn't actually that great of a guy. Uh, in the Sunday school version, maybe you got some of the more graphic details, like Samson killing tons of people with a donkey jawbone, or how he dies at the end of the book in sort of a gruesome way. But what you don't get is that Samson is not like a great guy. In fact, his greatest weakness, it seems to be, is like foreign women. Like he has a marriage at first that's from the Lord with a woman from the Philistines. And that, of course, doesn't go well, but it's not necessarily a sinful thing. But as the story progresses, we see that a lot of what happens happens because he goes and like spends the night with Philistine prostitutes. Uh, this is not like a super excellent detail about Samson's life. In fact, this is a pretty low point, and we think it's strange that God would use such a person to save the nation of Israel. The story ends with Samson giving in to his weakness, uh, that is, women, and uh, in not a good way. Uh, he is spending time with this one woman who is, of course, working with the Philistines and trying to get the secret to his strength, because Samson was a super strong guy, like legit superpowers. and. The Philistines obviously wanted to deal with this guy who was killing all their people. This woman, Delilah, was working with the Philistines as part of their plan to take down Samson. And so they were spending all these nights together and over time she tries to get the source of his strength out of him. So there's sort of this funny narrative where she says, oh, what is the source of your strength? And he'll say, oh, if you bind me with like animal sinews that are fresh and that I won't be able to break out and so she does it and then she says uh, Samson the Philistines are on you and then of course there's like this army of Philistines in the room over waiting to grab him if this actually works and of course he breaks out of the bonds and it turned out he lied to her about the source of his strength and she this happens over and over again with different things and eventually he just gets so sick of it that he's like all right fine I'll tell you what it is uh, and Samson was a Nazarite and in the ancient custom of being a Nazarite, you would stay away from dead animals and alcohol and you would not cut your hair. And so Samson had this long hair from birth that had been growing out all his life. And this was the secret of his strength. So of course when he tells Delilah this, the first thing that she does is she cuts off his hair, he loses his strength, and the Philistines take him away and they gouge out his eyes and they basically set him as like a forced worker in one of their prisons. The story of Samson ends with Samson in this prison, he gets taken out and there's this big festival to the Philistine god Dagon. And while he's there, they're sort of making fun of him. All of them are celebrating, yes, this guy that the Lord has been using to overthrow our people. Dagon has finally given this guy into our hands. And so while they're celebrating, Samson's standing there in the temple blind and he says, Lord, give me vengeance for the eyes that they've taken from me. And he puts his hand on the two pillars that are there in the temple that uphold it and he pushes and this brings down the temple. And the text gives the detail there are 3,000 people standing on top of the temple. We don't know how many were inside, but this is like one of the biggest events of, for the Philistines. And so thousands of Israel's enemies died in this one moment where Samson sort of brought down this whole temple on top of himself and these other people. And it says there in the text actually that when he did this, he killed more people there than he had in any of his previous battles with the Philistines. So what is the point of this tragic story? Well, we see that Samson's greatest weakness, uh, these sort of foreign romances, flings, uh, that weren't necessarily pure or, or good, uh, this great weakness of his ultimately led to his downfall and 
his downfall than to his death. But we notice it's interesting as well that God did through Samson what God had always been doing through the judges, and that was he saved his people. And ultimately, even though it came about in a terrible way, God still destroyed the Philistines and gave salvation to the Israelites. If we use our imagination, we can think about maybe a way that Samson would have done this differently if he was someone who had character and decided to obey the Lord. Uh, Samson probably would have killed the Philistines without dying himself, uh, without losing his eyes, without going through all these terrible things. But instead, because of Samson's lack of character and the choices that he chose through his life, God still used him to do the thing that God was going to do. But ultimately, it happened in a way that hurt Samson. Samson still bore the consequences of his actions, even though God's plan through him was still fulfilled. I think this is encouraging for us because we get to look and see that God uses people of terrible moral character throughout the Bible. Uh, the Old Testament, even though it is oftentimes seen as sort of this like big group of heroes who sh we should imitate their morals, a lot of the times in the stories, the morals of the Old Testament characters are not very good. I mean, think about Abraham, who even though he had this really good moment where he almost sacrificed his son, he also like told a bunch of people that his wife was his sister and then they just kind of took her away and he was like, yeah, it keeps me safe, so I'm okay with it. Like that's not, these aren't people to imitate. And so although Samson was a person of weak moral character, God still used him for the purposes that God had. In the same way, we can be encouraged because despite our shortcomings and our failures and our weaknesses and our blind spots, as Christians, God still has things through us that he wants to do. God still has ways that he wants to encourage his church throughout history even through us as individuals. He has ways that he wants us to serve him in our local body and love other people well and completely change their lives by the way that we treat them. God wants to use us to bring people who do not know him into his fold so that they may know him. And the cool thing is God is going to use you to do these things despite the fact and even in and through the fact that you, just like me, are a person who has moral weaknesses and failures. And God is good to use us, and he is gracious and kind, even in these ways that we fail him. I hope you have enjoyed and learned from this series of videos, and I hope that you have gained a deeper appreciation for texts of the Bible that maybe you don't understand very well, which is great, because there are a lot of texts of the Bible that I don't understand as well. And I hope that you are able to then come to these texts with a fresh light and be able to understand them better and understand the greater picture and drama of what God is doing in the whole Bible and what God is doing in our lives and history today. Thank you.